progress. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so it was a mountain season and then it's impossible. Oh, floodings here and there and, and, and then people cannot go. But we have gone through the G15 last Saturday and yes, certain uh, one one particular place in Sarawak was had to be postponed because uh, the because of the uh, condition and of course there was also uh, during that day itself a lot of uh, photographs of people uh, one feet or you know knee deep uh, water level but they still went to the polling uh, stations to 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 poll uh, okay to to cast their ballots you know uh, but we are thankful that the, uh, it went through okay the election is over you know, there was also those things being mentioned that if it's really bad, then the election may need to be postponed or there will be many uh, places need to be postponed. But we have gone through it already. Okay. And of course, now we are waiting for, the, we got the results, but still we don't have a PM. Okay. And then uh, many a times, uh, you know, our heart is like, uh, like a roller coaster rider. Suddenly it goes up because we hear some good news and suddenly the news changes, you know, and then our heart goes down, you know, we are like a roller coaster up and down, up and down with all the, the news that's coming. And then, of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, unverified news also coming in, this and that, you know. But I, I, I believe that as a church, we need to rise up above this, okay. Instead of going through the roller coaster, right, we need to come and be at peace, okay. That God is sovereign, He is in control, and whoever, okay, is going to be named as the prime minister, okay, and whichever coalition is going to become the government, okay, it may be something favorable for us, it may not be favorable for us, but whatever happens, God is still sovereign, and God is still going to do something. And so the 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 prayer that uh, I was praying for was for peace to prevail during and after election okay it's not just during the campaigning period during the polling day but after election also and thank god uh, we still are enjoying that elect uh, the peace okay of course there's a few here and there uh, voicing out and uh, demonstration and that's why uh, especially in clang valley area a lot of places has already been uh, there's a lot of roadblocks here and there uh, of course, the, the PD, PDRM said it's because they are making sure uh, there's uh, not much of a robbery and a crime rate will be brought down, but there are other reasons. But of course, uh, we want uh, 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 the peace to prevail. Okay, and so one of the words that, uh, that is there, okay, can I have the next slide? Okay, in Jeremiah 29, okay, in Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 7, it says, Also, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you also will prosper. Okay? Okay, in his peace, you will also have peace. Alright? And so, as we begin to see this, we begin to uh, begin to see a lot of things that is happening. And, and what God is asking us to do is this, that we need to pray for the peace okay uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, provocation and incitement of uh, you know one of the things that is always being mentioned is the may 13 may 13 may 1969 may 13 uh, those of you who are alive during uh, that time will know uh, the issues that happen and you know the the, the, the problems that happen and it's somehow uh, some certain uh, parties or certain groups or certain people like to always uh, remind and say, oh, May 13, 1969, May 13, just, just to bring fear. But today I just want to, to the, the three, there's three sub points that I want to share with you that I've prayed for, but I just want to also share. And then as we, as we go on this prayer time, we can also pray along this line. And the first thing is to lay to rest and bring healing. The first sub point. And that is for, for lay to rest and bring healing to the betrayal, to the backstabbing, to broken promises. And the list can just go on. Our nation needs to go through a time of healing. But before it goes through a time of healing, it first has to come to a point to lay to rest all the things 
that has happened, words that has been uh, thrown here and there, things that has been mentioned up and uh, uh, every time, uh, you, know, you know, every time an election time comes, a lot of words are being mentioned and, you know, there's a lot of these things. But I just want to draw your attention to something that really happened in the life of Jesus and uh, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 21. He says, now as they were eating, this was during the Last Supper and also just before going to Gethsemane. Now as they were eating, he said, Jesus said, Surely I say to you, one of you will betray me. Surely I say to you, one of you will betray me. You know, one of the hardest uh, situation or one of the most uh, devastating situation is to have someone who is together in the group who has done things together uh, uh, worked together uh, did things together and suddenly that person turns around and betrays that is a real real uh, very difficult uh, situation as uh, as humans, as I'm sure all of you uh, understand what I'm saying. When you have someone who's so close to you, sometimes it's even a person who has you grew up together. Someone who has uh, been together with you, did things together, uh, cooperated together, worked together, uh, you know, and then we have also... Uh, uh, said our, 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 our appreciation you know it's like it's like a trust that has been built up over the years suddenly this thing happened okay and and, and it's it's like something if you know, some people will say if a stranger betrays me i i can i can just uh, forego it and just forget about it but this person so close has betrayed me and Jesus had to go through this betrayal. And then, another case in that same chapter, in uh, verse 34 and 35, Jesus said to him, Jesus said to Peter, that is, Assuredly, I, was, I say to you that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And, and the reply was, Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. And as we look at this, we know what happened. And the time came, Peter did uh, deny him. And even in the Gethsemane, when he was, uh, Jesus was arrested, you can see that they were all scattered and they all ran away. You know, these things, when, when, when we think about it, it's it's so hard people who are so close people who are who have been together betray deny uh, and so you can backstep break promises uh, although saying that i will be with you all or whatever you go through can just say at one moment something can just happen you know everyone at that uh, when everything was okay, you can see a lot of things, but at that moment when you really, really, really need people to be there, they can just leave you and abandon you. And so Jesus went through this betrayal. Jesus went through this uh, uh, this denial. Uh, he was uh, den uh, three times Peter denied him, and people, uh, the disciples, those who were with him, were scattered, and all these things he had went through. But what really brought about? A change and really brought about the, the 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 deliverance into the life of Jesus is something that we can emulate, something that we can also uh, see, and that is in Luke chapter twenty three, verse thirty four, when he was nailed to the cross in pain uh, and really uh, beaten up, broken in a way. Uh, the way disfigured face, you know, in a way, he said this. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. At that moment, at the spur of the moment, people can just say things 
betray, backstab. There's something. They just do something. After saying that I will be with you, I will, pr- uh, I will, I will support you. You know, they can just turn around. But Jesus had this to say, Father, forgive them. And I believe if you want to, you know, when I talk about peace to prevail, it not ju- it must not just be a surface value peace. A surface value peace is just like uh, you you see each other. Uh, okay, everything is okay, but it must go deep inside. And in order for it to go deep inside. We need to 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 root out those very uh, very uh, stubborn roots that has been really embedded in the ground. You know, one of the things that we can we can see some of the uh, some of the trees, most of the trees. That is, if you can you can cut off the branches, you can cut off the stump, and and then but leave the roots down in the ground. After some time, new branches will start coming up again. And so, if we allow these things, incidences, this, uh, the events that in the history to take uh, that has taken place, if it ca- keeps on coming back, coming back, coming back, then it's going to be very difficult to live in peace. And so, we really need to, really need to address this. We really need to remove that roots. And in order to remove that roots, we really need to understand what has happened in the past. And many things we may not understand. Because uh, maybe we were not the ones who went through it, but we, in order for the things to be laid to rest, in order for the whole things to to bring healing, we need to lay to rest. We need to really understand, and only God is able to reveal. And this is one of the th- uh, some of the things that those who have gone for uh, prayer uh, prayer drives or prayer uh, walks in different places. This is one of the things they say. This. God's revelation is so important at that period of time because it really opened up their mind to understand, to know certain events that has taken place in the past which is still holding on in the lives of the, the generation that has come after that. And when, when Christians, the group has gone and asked God to forgive and whatever needs to be done has been put right, then they are able to lay to rest and bring a deliverance to the community. And so, when Jesus says, forgive them, this is what is needed. It's not uh, because they, they betrayed me, I will also betray them. Because they backstabbed me, I will also stab them. Because they broke the promises, I will also break promises. That is not the way Jesus replied. He says, Father, forgive them. And so, because of what he did on the cross, we read this in the book of Colossians chapter 2, 14 and 15. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So when he was nailed to the cross, he, it is not just him being nailed. He has nailed the things, the requirements, everything that was there. And verse 15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So the nailing on the cross, the people saw the body of Jesus being nailed to the cross. The physical body of Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross and say, oh Jesus is on the cross. But we see what really happened was the requirements that was against us was nailed to the cross. The principalities and powers that was uh, so uh, rejoicing that uh, Jesus Christ was being nailed to the cross was disarmed. And he made a public spectacle, triumphing over them by this. And so the words, the simple words, forgive them, because they do not know what you are doing. It's because God has planned that such a thing should take place in order that he can bring great deliverance and salvation to the world. Hallelujah. And so that's the first thing that we really need to pray for, and that is that we need to lay to rest and bring okay, healing to all this betrayal and we need to really pray and continue to pray so it's not just something to be prayed on on the on election day and even until the the prime minister is announced and then after that we forget all about it it has to go on and on until jesus christ comes or until we are called into eternity we need to continue with this the second thing we also need to pray for is that we need to remove that mindset and culture of treating opposition as enemies 
or oh, this is something we can see it happening all around okay the moment you become an opposition then you are my enemy immediately and this is a mindset that will reject all good things even if the opposition is able to 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 come up with a plan which is so good which is the best plan it will not be accepted it will be rejected you know this word the the, the words say towing the party line even when it's wrong just tow the party line because you're not a part of me so this issue this mindset this culture of treating opposition as enemies is so strong that it can really it really uh, doesn't bring any good okay there's an animosity that is very which is uh, animosity which is a very strong feeling of dislike and hatred is built up opposition 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 okay treated like an enemy okay it's it's a, it's a ill will resentment okay which eventually will go towards active hostility why do people take up arms why do they why do people uh, shout and do this and uh, challenge and shout and all these things because it is it is the army enemy but we need to pray that this mindset and this culture will be removed you know one of the things that uh, happened in the life of jesus when he was in at samaria and he asked uh, for water to drink from the samaritan woman okay in john 4 the reply was this then the woman of samaria said to him how is it that you being a jew ask a drink from me a samaritan woman and uh, and then it continues to say for jews have no dealings with samaritans this is a very deeply rooted issue that has from the old testament itself the jews and the samaritan okay and, and they are not able to associate and it was there during the time of uh, jesus and it was so str strong uh, feeling that the, it's not just jews looking down at the Sam uh, samaritan samaritans also didn't want to associate with the jews and they to them is uh, they don't just didn't want it okay and so they had different uh, things of doing different places of worship all these things you can read in uh, chapter 4 itself but i will not go very deep into it but this is how it was but jesus went to really build a relationship there when when the, when the the scribe the lawyer came and asked what is the greatest commandment jesus said about uh, greatest to love and the second is like it to love your neighbor as your uh, as yourself you know the uh, and yes who's my neighbor who is my neighbor and jesus spoke about the parable of the good samaritan he was trying to bring about that that, that to break that mindset and that culture that always treats the opposition as an enemy and so we need to also deal with this mindset and so when jesus uh, spoke about this he also had to uh, had uh, this uh, event that took place in his life in mark chapter 7 when the when the Syrophoenician uh, woman the mother came okay and uh, asked Jesus for healing for the child and Jesus made this uh, uh, replied and said this in uh, 27 28 but Jesus said to her let the children be filled first for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs okay so we know the way the Jews look at the Samaritans so Jesus wanted to bring it out okay in the open you know sometimes uh, there's a uh, there's sometimes they, they always uh, it's always embedded very deep within but sometimes in a, in a, in the mouth wise you know physically the face facial is under, there's a smile okay okay everything is okay but deep within there's so much of hurt and hatred animosity so strong okay but jesus had to address this by uh, by uh, need to read uproot it by bringing out the issue okay but the reply that she gave and she answered and said to him yes lord yet even the little dogs under the table eat the ch children's crumbs another version in the book of uh, another uh, passage in the book of matthew it says uh, uh, these things and then the reply uh, that we get after that is, is the healing takes place the reply that jesus gives in the book of matthew is this oh great faith the faith is being acknowledged and so in order to really come out of this to deal with this mindset we really need to come 
and put our faith right before God and we really need to pray about this. We need to really remove this mindset, this culture of treating the opposition as an... So one of the things that we, we see here happening is to, to, to really come, they talk about unity government, but you know, it's so difficult to just say, get all the good people together and work for the betterment of Malaysia. So difficult. No, 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 no. We have to toe the party line. That's how things are happening today. No, we cannot work with this person. We cannot work with that person. It's like, that's how it is. And so, because of this, we are up to, I think this will, I would say, it's a, almost a fifth date, a fifth day already after all that's happening. But we need to, as a church, we need to rise up above this and to realize this in Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Okay? The battle that is going on right now is a battle between flesh and blood. Okay, between parties, between all these things. And so sometimes we also take sides and we also want to battle against flesh and blood without realizing that our real battle is against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is where the real battle takes place. And so it's so wonderful to have so many of you coming together, uh, praying together with that uh, unity. You know, we talk about unity government. I think the most important thing is the, a united church is what is really needed. A united church that is able to pray as one to, to bring down strongholds. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, and so we need to remove this mindset that is always uh, looking at the opposition as an uh, uh, enemy. The enemy city has to be removed. And so along this line, the, the third point that I want to share is this. We need to remove the racial and the religious discrimination. You know, it is being used as a political weapon. Uh, it's, being, uh, it's being used uh, to pro pro provoke. Uh, it's being used to, to, to really uh, s do things, you know, use this as a weapon. You know, it's being used as a weapon against certain p group of people's parties and all these things. And many a times, this is how it is. So you can have a lot of slogans and uh, themes, okay, uh, of, of fostering harmony in the multicultural uh, society, or you can have all these things, but it can never and will never be able to bring healing until we, we take action and really remove this discrimination, which is not just on the outside, it is from the heart. The, the, the animosity that has started, which is being built up within. The young ones who are, who are growing up and being uh, bombarded with this, this, uh, this feeling of animosity and says, oh, this group of people, that group of people, all oh, this, you be careful with this, they will do this, they will do that. All oh, those words are being bombarded, being, being uh, sent into the airways of over Malaysia. We need to start claiming and uh, removing this discrimination and we need to speak the word of God over the airways of Malaysia. That the people over Malaysia will become united. Okay, we must come to a point that all Malaysians are treated equally and with dignity. All Malaysians, and not just Malaysians, even those who are here in, in Malaysia working, all will be treated with equality and with dignity. And that is what we need to pray for. And so when Jesus uh, the words of uh, in the book of Revelation, this is where and this is where we need to go forth. Okay, uh, Revelation chapter seven nine to ten says, after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs to our god who sits on the throne and to the lamb and this is where our ultimate goal is this is where we are going to reach when i talk about race and uh, race and religion discrimination i'm not i'm not saying that only malaysians are going through it i tell you uh, the other countries in this world are even worse than what we are going through. People, people are killing each other. You know, they have territories of different uh, tribes, have different territories, different uh, territorial line. If one cross over to the other, they get killed. You know, yeah, it is really, it's not something just in Malaysia. It's all around the world. It's happening. But we need to 
pray that we will be able to come out of this and Malaysia will become a role model of how multicultural, multi-racial, uh, multicultural society is able to work together and to bring Malaysia up again. And so, as we begin to pray for these three items, the first thing is to lay to rest and bring healing upon all the betrayals and all those things that happened in the past. Okay, backstabbing, broken promises. Even even today, there could be a promise made, and tomorrow it can be broken. But we need to really pray that people will overcome this this uh, the feeling of animosity. Okay, so that the culture of treating opposition as enemies is removed. So when we see another person walking down the street, as we see another person, we don't look at them and say, "Oh, this is uh, from this group. Oh, is this person is from that group, from this tribe, from that tribe." We don't look at any, any of these things. Everyone is treated equally in the sight of God. And we need to remove that animosity from this land. We need to remove that, 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 the culture of uh, the mindset that says, this is my enemy. We need to remove it. And we just want to pray that all will be able to, able to work together. And finally, we need to remove this discrimination, this racial and religious discrimination that's always being used as a weapon. Every time an election comes, every time they want to, every time they come together for a group to uh, speak, okay, wherever it is, it could be in a, in a hall, sometimes in a mosque, sometimes, uh, sad to say, sometimes even in a church, okay, these words are being mentioned, racial and religious discrimination. You know, one of the things that I, I, I just uh, re uh, reminded as a person just said this, okay? Religion is man-made, but relationship is God-made. Religion is man-made. Man is the one that formed all his religion. But what God wanted to establish was a relationship. And so, let us pray and ask God to move that every tribe, every people, every different tongues that we have in Malaysia will be able to come together. Amen. Before the, the, the final day comes of standing before God's throne, we are able to come together and to worship God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you. Father, we just want to praise you. Lord Jesus, we are not, yes, Lord Jesus, we are weak by ourselves, Lord, but Lord, we want to ask of you, Lord, to help us to overcome. Father, Lord, we want peace to prevail. We do not just want a surface value peace to prevail, Lord. We do not just want to have a, a peace, Lord, that is just being words being put up, Lord, slogans or themes that's being put up and say, so this is the, what we are going to have, achieve. But Lord, we want it to happen from the heart first, Lord. Yes, Lord, we want it, to, Lord, to come out, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord deeply embedded Lord Jesus the, the feeling Lord of having that peace and harmony in this nation and Lord we have blessed us Lord with many tribes Lord groups of people people group Lord yes Lord yes Lord from different Lord yes Lord uh, backgrounds Lord Lord we want to come together we want to be united Father Lord removing all the discrimination against race and religion removing Lord that, that mindset Lord that says that everyone of the different group are animals enemies Lord we want to remove that animosity a lot and to be able to work together yes lord to see this nation coming up lord jealous together lord make us to go as one lord before you lord and first of all we start from the church we start with the church yes lord to bring that unity a lord god father lord we pray that, yes lord that we will be able to yes lord lay to rest lord all that issues lord that is there lay to rest and lord that we'll be able lord jesus to bring healing lord Yes, Lord, in this to this nation. Oh, Lord, help us to rise up above the problems. Rise, rise above all the issues that's happening. And as a church that is united, yes, Lord, we'll be able, Lord, to proclaim peace and harmony over our nation. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just uh, 